team. This is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 for Thursday, September the 7th, 2023. The market did kick in a little bit to the downside today. So I'm going to jump right into here. We're just going to start right on the hourly chart. I have no changes to make to that. To the larger picture, I continue to view current action in both the S&P and the NASDAQ as the beginning stages of a minor third wave down within the context of a uh, primary C wave down and underneath that, an intermediate first wave down. And then within that, minor wave three of intermediate wave one of primary wave C. So here in the S&P, we did finally break below 44.50 got all the way down to 44.34, and then it almost felt like it just kind of turned on the engine again, and they hightailed it to get it back to 44.50 real quick, and then spent pretty much the rest of the of the session right there surrounding uh, resistance and then support. So what it does do for our count is that, as you can see, again, we're in that minor wave three down. And the beginning stages. So I think we're still going to be putting in a minute wave one. So we're doing minute wave one of minor three. That's my best guess right now. This, of course, can change in terms of degree. But in terms of what I'm witnessing or what I'm seeing is a one, two, and then we have a one, two, three, four, five. For a third, that came in on today's lows. And so we're within a small fourth wave. And then here are the fibs for that. And so we have 44.71 up here on top, but it seems to be hugging and hanging out around 44.57. So whether it actually kind of can get itself up to this level or not is not as important as just we see the structure. Structure looks like it could be pretty complete right in here. Now, what would this all suggest is that we have a wave five. So I would put a four here and then we get a wave five down. And that being the case, if I were to put the four here, uh, and, and I would run my fibs, which would compare four to uh, a wave five to wave one. And this is just a guesstimate because I don't have any clear defined move that this fourth wave is could possibly be done. It's a possibility, but I don't have any confirmation of that just yet. But let's say that it did. Then what we'd be looking for is this fifth wave down, and the equality is at 4422.50. And that would seem pretty logical. And then what we have done after that is likely completed minute wave one. Then once that's done, we get a wave two correction and then start the process again. So we're going to be building now to the downside, but building within five wave structures. So we complete minor wave three, which is going to have five waves of minute degree within it. And if we're just finishing minute wave one, then we have a three wave minute, minute wave two, an additional five waves for minute wave three, another three for four, and another five for minute wave five. So it's going to take a little bit of time <clears throat> for us to get down to the completion point for minor wave three. We can take a look because I've already put up some fib extensions for what we might want to be looking for. And again, <clears throat> excuse me, what the fibs are suggesting is that we're going to get down to 4,089. And that is where wave three would be equal to 1.618 times the length of minor wave one. So 100% is a 4,264. But again, under the guidelines that Elliot gave us, Third waves are most often the longest and the strongest, which already puts us down below this level. So longest would have to be below 4264 before it would overtake minor, uh, minor wave one. That's almost a given in the expectation wise. So I'm definitely looking for it to come below here. And then we do likely I could throw in some additional support levels. And just to give you an example, uh, 1382, for example, could kind of come in there. And then you can see that we kind of can get down to 4155 and then ultimately down to 4089. But of the most common that that uh, that we that I keep up are <clears throat> 1.618 and then 2.618, which is all the way down below. So again, 
minor wave three, those would be the indications that we could use on how deep this wave should come. Now, bringing this back up so we can take a peek. So we're just, again, within that first minute wave. Now, I'm going to be looking for that to complete and, and possibly very strongly that it could just do it tomorrow. And that would set the stage if they do it early in the session. And I'd be looking for that wave two to kind of bring us back up and then that buying back in uh, that we often see after we're completing, then we get our corrective wave up. And so that would be the same situation. This way, it's a four. And again, I'm going to reemphasize, I don't have confirmation of four is complete. So these are guesstimates in terms of uh, comparing wave five to wave one. So I'm going to take that off again. But we know we see we see somewhere around 4422. And that tends, there's a couple of uh, uh, fibs that have come in right at that level. And in fact, um, we had some additional, before I marked this as completing uh, three, there was an additional one down at 4422, 4429. And that was, again, placing this to this and then down. So being that that's complete, now I'm going to look for the four, and then we'll come down in a five. Now, again, whether that happens overnight or whether that happens tomorrow during our session, um, it should set the stage for a little bit larger, but in the form of a larger wave two. If this is going to be minute wave one, a minute wave two. And then we'll look for that to get started. Uh, moving average-wise, I'm going to start back out here on the daily so that we can see, because what we were looking at on the daily, we were keeping an eye on that 50. And it did kind of break below that 50 today. And guess what it did? It ran all the way back up and closed right on it. I find that very, very interesting at how the market uh, tends to do that, where it's like you break that 50 and then you race to get back up. You don't want to close below it. Because for some reason, there's algorithms that are going to be set or just that our traders are using that as their guide as when they should step in and sell. Well, they did, actually. When it broke, it went very quickly down. And then they brought it all the way back up and held it right there for the balance of the day. So again, I would look at one more time for this to be broken and then eventually for it to really start to turn and start to angle lower as this third wave continues to unfold. But that was the story on the daily for today. And I found it kind of interesting. On the hourly, we've got the 50s rolled over. We've got the 200s beginning to roll over, except for the SMA. The SMA is still now starting to crest out right here. So anything to the upside, by the way, you're going to find resistance at these 50s, which is 44.74 to 44.79. And then we have the 200 EMA, and that's at 44.82.83. And then the SMA, 200, at 4494, 9394. Should it get there? Not saying that that's where it's going to go, but that's how we use the moving averages. Right now, they're going to be presenting resistance as they continue to march lower, and anything going back in the other direction, they should provide some resistance. And in fact, if it starts to move up, I would suggest that this 200 the EMA starts to flatten out and really start to provide some resistance right there. Over in the NASDAQ, NASDAQ was kind of the, took the lead today because it, at some point, just, just right after the opening, the Dow decided that it would it really needed to go up. And so we had a lot of money getting moved into, again, insurance. Uh, some of it went to financials like the banks and um, McDonald's and a couple other you know, stocks that kind of got fixed uh, to the upside. And so the Dow was actually up close to 100 at one point today, and then backed off towards the close, as is, again, pretty uh, common. So here in the NASDAQ, we also, on the hourly chart, here we are coming into today, we started to break down, but we had, uh, let me just kind of open this up. So technically what I'm still looking at, let me just tell you, there's the minor two right there. And so what I've got going on here is again, counting out this first minute wave. 
So I had thought this all looked a little bit bizarre, but I'm I'm actually going to, as I left it yesterday, there's one, two, and three are inside here. I did break it down, one, two, and the third. And then we get the four, and I know there's overlap, but it it is occurring more. And it occurs within, you know, these, these, these were the Globex sessions. And then once we got back on board on Monday, it just drove it down to put in this wave one. So small wave one, small wave two. Wave three comes in. And again, as I left it, we looked like we had nesting one twos. And that really was the story. So we have one, two, and then another one, two, three, four, five. For the third, we got the four looking for a a fifth wave down now. And again, here's our fibs. So we have 100% uh, not going to be good enough. 1.618, eh, maybe good enough because these were kind of spikes, a little bit of the extreme within the um, candle. So we have 15,161. Uh, needs to really get below 15,158, which I think should not be too much of a hassle for the NASDAQ. And then we have 2.618 down here of 50,068. And then outside of all that, I did have for that larger third, and let me go ahead and put that one back up so that we can see it. And we're right there. So we have these coming off, 193 and then 14,950. So you see that kind of gaps in between there. This one kind of got, was met, but it held. We had a couple of extremes push down quickly below it and then jump back and get to it. And then we started to go up in that wave four. So it should continue to, to provide some support on the way back down. But I would think once again, we break, we come down quickly to here and get below that level, putting in a fifth wave, putting in the third wave, right, on this degree, and then setting up the stage for an additional fourth wave. Once that is in, in other words, once this fifth and then the, the three coming in down here, we'll be able to draw out fibs from this level down to wherever that three ends up. And that'll give us where we get again, another fourth wave. And then again, one more time down. And then that level, so is where I'm thinking this is where this is going to come in. That level would then give us that uh, third wave on this degree. So we got a four, uh, one more time, wait a minute, got that a little bit backwards. So we get the four and the five, and that gives us the third. Then we get another four and another five, and that gives us minute wave one. That's what I meant to say. So let me go over that one more time. So we have one, we have two. We have one, two, three, and a four, looking for a five to come back down. And then get just below 15,150, let's call it 155, maybe down to here, maybe down to here. That'll put in that five, and then we put in a third. We do a fourth wave. We come back down again in a fifth on this degree, and then we're likely going to get closer to 14,950. And then once that's done, then we got minute wave one in. And then we get a minute second wave rally. So we get, a, you know, that's the whole process. We do five down, we do three up. We're going to do five down, we do three up. So wave twos and four are the corrective. So they're going to be to the upside, the counter trend at this moment. So again, moving average wise, we still got that 50. And that all is because they kind of bounced out of this uh, pretty hard. And a lot of that came on the back of Meta. Metaverse decided today that for whatever reason, and I actually think it was due to the options and how they were trading, that there was a lot of stock being purchased. So it could have been that they were buying puts or it could have been that they were actually buying calls so that dealers were selling the calls and buying the stock. And <clears throat> for whatever reason, Meta, which ended up closing down a little bit, closing down 50 cents, at one point was trading above 307. So again, we're looking at something that basically was about seven, eight dollars above where it was, where it closed. So not out of the picture for it to come sliding back down. Also, I saw the same thing start to happen in Amazon. The way that the options are trading, it produced that there was just more buying and more need of buying in the stock. They did it in Tesla as well. Tesla went to the positive, came back, went negative. So off and on during the day, depending on how those options were trading, 
we saw a, a movement back with purchasing of the stock. And again, this kind of goes back to, I did a, um, a web show and the title of the show was our derivative, our, our derivatives, the new underlying. So instead of like the underlying being for this, in, in this example, metaverse or Amazon, that's the underlying, the stock. It would be the options. The trading in the options dictates what is that move is going to happen in the stock. And it was the pressure was to buy the stock. So up it went and then oftentimes stayed higher. All right. So, but here, what that result was, was that the SMA continued to climb, very similar to what we saw in the S&P. But the EMA did crest and is now angling, angling down, not necessarily breaking down, but angling down. And if we get a little bit of additional downside, one more trip down, I believe it likely is going to get at least the 50 EMA down below the 200 EMA. And those are both on the hourly chart and get these down. The 20 continues to head lower, kind of getting a little flat as we kind of crest it out here. And the four and the eight are going to follow the market pretty cleanly. So still looking for some additional downside, but it's not going to turn into more of a stair-stepping. So what we have, again, the nesting product is that we have one more of four, and then that's complete. If indeed, if not, we get a little bit more upside to go. Uh, we, we get that into place. We get the fifth. That's going to put that third in. We get a, another fourth, and then we get a fifth, and that's going to put the minute wave one in. All right. I am going to complete it right there. Again, tomorrow, I let me just double check. If we have anything, wholesale inventories and consumer credit. So consumer credit comes out at the end of the day, comes out at 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Wholesale inventories, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then we do have the San Francisco Fed President, Mary Daly, talking, um, speaking somewhere, starting at 11 a.m. Don't forget today, uh, continuing now, at 7 p.m., we have Atlanta Fed, Rafael Bostic, and at 7, 7.05, Dallas Fed, Lori Logan, both of those yet to speak this evening. So that's going to wrap it up for today. And uh, all in all, not the, uh, to be honest with you, it was sometimes easy uh, trading day. Um, but there were periods where the market just decided, no, we're not going down anymore. And we would get up. And if you got caught in the short, you kind of gave back some of your money. Um, but overall, it was a decent day. And here again, this is where they, being a day trader does kind of trump sometimes carrying a position. Um, because being a day trader allowed you just to kind of flip and go along with the market as they wanted to push Meta and a couple other stocks higher. It marched the it marched the Nasdaq again from fifteen thousand one fifty five back to fifteen thousand three eleven. So you know those are pretty decent moves. You know that's that's a that's a pretty big move. All right, enough said. So tomorrow. Hopefully, it's going to be, again, it's a Friday expiration, uh, so we're going to have some of that in play, and so particularly with all of the underlying, not necessarily with the indexes and, and some of those ETFs, which have zero DTE options, they expire every day. Here, we've got the, you know, the Apple and all of those that do come out and expire tomorrow for the week, so that'll be into play as well, I would imagine. So the next update, though, will be on Sunday, September the 10th. So again, have a great trading day tomorrow and have a great weekend. Talk to you all again on Sunday.